Sinead O'Connor. Yeah. She knew the prophecy. She always said what was going to happen before it happened. When they do a revised version of Holy Blood, Holy Grail, Sinead O'Connor's going to be in that book. Oh, so uh, Haddon Clark's birthday today. He's a serial killer from the like, Massachusetts area. He, uh, he turned 71 today. For me, it was when I, ran, when I found out he worked at fancy restaurants and he pissed in the food. He peed in the food, like, like on Fight Club. And I, I read that and I was like, well, I need to make this song good. And I basically wrote the song around the fact that he peed in the, in the food. But uh, this is pretty new. I don't know if I can do this. I'm going to see how far through it I can get right now. And I just changed the riff like the other day, too. I think the handlebar jack is making this sound so good. Yeah. Growing up, he didn't play well with other children. Could get back at them, kidnap their cats, and kill them. His ancestry could be traced to the Mayflower Pilgrims. A religious guilt trip complex instilled in his military pension. Culinary interest, skillful in the kitchen. Worked at the Olympics, malicious. He pisses in expensive dishes. Job to job in Boston gets suspicious. Uh, I fucked it up. Keep going, man. Uh, you got it, you got it. Fish it in the game. Military pension, culinary interest. Skillful people cook at the end. Skillful people cook at the end. Now I can't even get where I was. That's alright, I have other songs. Alright. Great try, great try. So 50 years ago, at least I got to the piss, pit expenses, yeah. pissing and expensive dishes. Yeah. Yeah. Herbert Mullen, another whack, uh, whack of no, uh, he he killed to to prevent uh, for, like natural catastrophes, hurt earthquakes and shit. He said that he heard voices telling him to kill. His trial began 50 years ago yesterday. So this is my song about uh, that whole uh, thing. Him, uh, Herbert Mullen in Santa Cruz. Same exact time that Ed Kemper was killing people in Santa Cruz. There were more was. And as he could have just got a... It's a strange case. This is not like... I don't know. I don't know if I agree with like this sentiment of the song. Because he, he did drugs. He did drugs and then he killed people. Like that's... That's not a given... That's not, that doesn't look good for us, you know? I mean, come on. A normal childhood boy scouts in Little League Been around the time he took his first hit of weed In high school was voted most likely to succeed Best friend died in a car crash down on that city He dropped from LSD boys his disembodied Told him they killed him from a natural catastrophe There's quakes and tsunamis crashed down on that city Lawrence White was to be the first kill of his feet The priest fell black bloody nicks He attacked Mary Gill Hold it with body scarring Scattering a church confession Even had a stab The priest was less than acting contrition Then a blast of me He called it the dive Felt he had to sink in person like a psycho out of beef out of pistol and carried on psychotic with Kathy Prince and Chris Wooks had no chance of fleeing and then he shot all three numbers that played Dizzy murdered 14 out of the woods camping Fred Perez made 13 to tuck his got lucky the neighbor wrote his license number down finally with him and cut Dizzy they throw away the key throw away the key they threw away the key and oh side note Herbert Mullen just died like last year too and it was just like natural causes and it wasn't like anything crazy so yeah he just died but 50 years ago yesterday his court trial started again all right one real quick short one because mary bell uh she killed brian howe 55 years ago today she was the british bad seed this song i could play with my hands kind of that drunk as fuck because this is like Tapeworm, did they make the movie Bad Seed about her? They might have. Yeah, Nick, Cave, Nick Cave might have named his band after. That's right, he did. Yeah, yeah that's right. There was a film, yeah. About Bad Seed. Yeah. I'm not sure, though. I haven't seen it. I don't know. I need to see it. Did she kill Martin Brown and Brian? How by herself? The note she wrote was this film. She 
what I need been 12 too young to go to love at sea to hard shell run to the core but still too young to go to hell detectives knew damn well it wasn't hard to tell them carving house belly stripper Mary Bell too young to go to hell possess she fell from the fire and ain't a demonic spell but too young to go to hell Mary Mary had a little Since I've gained some weight and I've got a bit of a belly to toss around now, 
It's a lot funnier. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to collapse the stage before uh, before Houston comes up here to take it. Uh, but folks, you're in for a treat. I'm going to dial down the uh, the reverb here. I think reverb does not do anything good for comedians. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me throw a little bubbles up here. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Houston Wells. He's, yeah! It's not like normal Gainesville comedians. He's funny. Yay! Send the bar a little fucking high there for you, gentlemen. Well, thank you very much. First off, I just want to say, Tapeworm, I haven't seen you with the, the uh, Firecracker before that scared the shit out of me. I did not know what was going to happen. I thought you were lighting a cigarette and it went off. And I just want you to know, you hit your mark right here. Yeah. And your target demographic was thrilled and impressed. Uh, so we've had some uh, we've had some Sinead O'Connor tributes this evening, which have been very touching. Um, I'd like to do my little tribute to Hugh uh, Herman. It was a night. Sing along if you know it, just like tonight. Along this same stretch of road, that's when I saw the worst accident I ever seen. There was a sound like a garbage truck dropped off the Empire State Building, and where they pulled the driver's body from the twisted, burning wreck. It looked like this. You remember, right? I feel like the pressure's off tonight. I really feel like uh, you guys are with me. Are you doing okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What are you wearing tonight? We will get to that later, we'll I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a little something for you, right, for an angel dust a little bit later on as well. Tate Parton, I've spoken to you. Tom Miller, a favorite. Years ago, I saw you boil a lobster live on stage. It's the, uh, somewhere in Midtown. I don't remember what it was called. And, uh, you, seen, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. It's good to see everybody. Uh, I um, I bought a can of tuna the other day at the grocery store, and it says right here on the can, it says Dolphin Safe. Have you noticed this on the can of tuna? Dolphin Safe, too. No dolphins were harmed in the catching of this tuna. I found something out. You know what? Dolphins fucking eat tuna. No! <laughs> dolphins catch and murder tuna fish every day, and there's legislation to protect dolphins from tuna. Oh, People wonder if dolphins are an intelligent species. I say you gotta be pretty fucking clever to pull off a scam like that. <laughs> I think they're in cahoots with the banks. Mm-hmm. Not you're probably right. They're not just, we're not just blaming the victim, we're packing them in spring water and putting them in a little can. So I don't know if you're with me on this here. Based on my early childhood education, this is for you. I'm talking to you guys at the bar. You're missing this. This is amazing. I have a direct question for you. Are they, are they insane? I don't know. Tommy, Tommy. I got a question for you, Tommy. Tommy. Hey, Tommy. Tommy Bahama. I got a question for you. Tommy. 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 You gotta stop talking. I got a question for you. Specifically for you. What? Well. Basically, it's not really a question, it's more of a stand-up routine that I just want you to listen to. Um, based on my early education, I assumed that knowing... This is so fucking stupid now. I assumed that knowing what animal makes what noise would play a much bigger role in my life, right? Think of, like, every, every picture book that you have, right? Every, every preschool toy? was like, what does the pig say? What does the cow say? I mean, I fucking, I sang Old MacDonald had a farm with my grandmother so many times, I thought I was being uh, prepared to be like some cult or something like that. And, uh, well, what does the pig say? What does the pig say? What does the cow say? You see, we all know it. It's, it's his brother. We all have been indoctrinated into this cult of animal noises. And, well, strictly speaking, the cow doesn't say anything. The cow makes a noise. It doesn't represent any complex thought, right? The cow's not standing out in the field going... 
Existential dread. Cows, they're not doing it. They're not doing it. I thought this would be pretty important stuff, though. Um, and it turns out it wasn't. After about first grade, they completely drop animal noises from the curriculum. Right? It's just gone. Yeah. You're like, I guess it wasn't so important after all. Oh, I, uh, I, Are you ready for the ironic twist? What? Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. I majored in zoology. When I was 22 years old, yeah. I took a class called vertebrate zoology, and guess what was on the final? We had to identify bird and frog species based on the sounds that they made. That is true. So it all came full circle. It all, yeah. <laughs> Those animal noises, I didn't know. And they actually, they have recordings we had to listen to. The professor didn't go to the front of the room and say, like, what's, what bird says quack? That didn't happen. But uh, it's moving on. <laughs> so you know what I think a tough job would be? I think it would be tough to be a referee, and here's why. If you uncovered corruption within the industry, and you decided to come forward as a whistleblower, everybody would just assume it was halftime. That's it, it was referee, they blow a whistle. Fuck you guys, oh, fuck you so bad. Oh, those jokes, I told those jokes last week. Don't worry, I'll here. So, uh, I'm a little bit <laughs> I'm, uh, I mean, you guys, I, I, you know what I love about this room? What? You make me feel young. You make me feel young. Aww. Trevor Taylor and Jason May. But you know what, the truth is, the truth is getting a little bit older is not so bad, right? Well, I mean, your, your priorities shift a little bit. What? I love it. I love it. I want that. Uh, the, uh, what the fuck was I going to say? Your priorities shift a little bit when you look older. Like, um, uh, I'm still interested in friends with benefits, but that just means I want to be friends with an optometrist, a dentist. <laughs> All right, thank you, thank you. Uh, so, um, yeah, another thing about getting older is, like, when I was younger, when I was in college, it's like, I was always fucking broke. Who here was broke in college? Yeah, I was like, I was always scrounging for beer money. Right, but now, I'm old, sorry. But we were broke when we were young, right? I'm broke now. No, the truth is, I'm, you know, I'm not rich, but if I want to buy something, I just fucking buy it, right? It's not like being completely broke. Like when I walk in the front door of the liquor store, it's like that scene when they first walk into Willy Wonka's factory. Mm -hmm. Come with me, and you'll be in a world of pure intoxication. There's the scotch. There's the rum. There's the cheap shit. <laughs> okay, so I said, Reverend, that I have a little bit for you. You ready for him? Yes. It's an oldie, but I love it. I am ready for the full legalization of marijuana in this yeah. state. Oh, hallelujah. And here's why. I can't wait to see that commercial. <laughs> Do you suffer from clarity of thought? Short-term memory retention. <laughs> steady, steady employment. Ask your doctor if Gonjinex is right for you. Side effects may include Cheeto fingers, sofa butt, shitty car syndrome, Bob Marley posters, and... Was I saying something just now? <laughs> Folks, that's my time! You did something! Houston Wells, everybody, He's so fun, and I just love it. You took me back. You remember that? What was that stupid thing? You pull the string, and it spins around, and it does the animal noises. Oh, the, yeah. You know, right. Yeah. yeah. I've I've had some moments with cows uh, in North Carolina. I was staying in a house. There's a whole pack of cows, and if there's nothing to do, and you're the only human being, they will just gather and wait, and just look at you like. And it's, it's creepy as fuck. The fog, six in the morning, a whole pack of cows slowly amble up, freeze, and stare at you. It's just the creepiest thing that, that you, you ever experienced. And that's why I don't jerk off in front of cows anymore. So uh, anyway, and they don't go, yeah, they don't go no, they kind of do, or I don't know, it's like you said, make a sound. All right, let's, let's go on here. Holy shit. 
You gotta be kidding me. I see three interesting things on the set already. Yeah, you're one of them, Daryl. I see you signed up here. Is that you, or did somebody sign you up? Or is there another Daryl? Is that your other brother, Daryl? Thank you, thank you. That's a very old, <laughs> old joke for only old people to watch a lot of TV. Shit. Tommy, you signed up? Is that you? Tommy Stone? Yeah. Your last name is Stone? Sometimes. <laughs> Get Tommy up there. Why don't you come up here? Do stuff. Uh, He ain't gonna let you. Leave yeah, you gotta, gotta, gotta go, man. Huh? I gotta, I got ten, you got ten minutes. He's gonna give you ten minutes to play that beautiful. Is that a twelve string? Nah, it's a, it's a string. that's a six string guitar. You don't need no stinking cable. In my telephone, ladies and gentlemen. Tommy, who's, who I, I never knew your last name was Stone. Ta Tommy is in my uh, phone under Genius Songwriter. No kidding, I'll show it to you if you don't believe me. And you're, and you're about, I think, to find out why. Ladies and gentlemen, Tommy Stone.
just dressed of all the deacons in town. I don't know who your people are, nor do I know where I am. Wait a minute, I recognize your hair. I know who you are. John, your face looks familiar. I even know your name. Hey, I know who I am. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's Monday night. It's Monday night. It's much better. I start Okay. Okay, we got bubbles. We have friendly bubbles. Nice veil of friendly bubbles. That'll help refresh you. So today I'm wearing the snakeskin shoes. From an Italian company called Moreschi. Sounds like a Polish name. It's actually. It's actually. An Italian name. I had a friend, he's a retired French Canadian retail salesman. His feet got so fat he gave me his shoes. I'm wearing linen pants I found in the dumpster. White linen shirt that I don't remember where it came from. Jacket from a Japanese stationery company. I'm not making that up. No, no talking, ma'am, in the back with the red hair. I'm wearing a prosthetic nose from the John collection. Like, I get my nose from the same place John gets his nose. I'm not making that up, John. We actually do. We actually do. We actually... <laughs> well, maybe you do. I'm not... <laughs> nice. Is this the show? Uh, hair, same place Auntie Bobo got her hair. Let's move on to the next time. All right. Let me turn off the bubbles and stop the music. Folks, we're about to get serious now. In the world we live in today is... As you, as you may have known... No, no heckling, please. Your heckling is awful. Uh, in, the, uh, in the world we live in, you know, there's been a lot of, a lot of troubles, all right? As you know, Sinead, Dewey, the Dead. billionaire submarine implosion. Good riddance. War. I mean, it's, it's getting south. And the only thing we can do is to try and better ourselves as human beings, try to fit more knowledge into our maws so that maybe we can get off planet Earth or figure something out or clean up the environment. Or we've got to do something. And the only way to do that at a free show like this is to listen to Michael Garvin answer three and possibly four questions such that you might leave here smarter than when you came in. It's free to get in. We actually, we're a church, we give you knowledge. So, with that in mind, we will take three and possibly four questions from Michael Garvin. And please, the form of the question is very important. I'll give you the right way to do it the wrong way. Hey, Michael, jelly beans. Hey, Michael, what happened with Madonna? Okay? Hope that's clear. Anyone? Questions? Questions? Yes. Coming right up to the audience with a microphone repaired by the one and only. The lady. No, no, I know you're the one. I was saying oh, okay. that the mic repair was. You know, oh, 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 was you know. Okay, go ahead. Hey, Michael Calculus. Great. See, that's perfect. That's the way to ask a question. Okay. okay. Michael, the question was Hey, Michael Calculus. The lady, first of all, you're a very, very handsome woman. And calculus, it comes from the Roman word for a little stone, okay? And calculus is a great fraud that's been perpetrated since the 1600s. There were two charlatans out there. One was named Newton, one was named Leibniz. One was an Englishman, one was a German. And they came up with the same scheme at the same time. And ever since then, 350 years later, people have been uh, in, in awe of calculus, but it's just a sham. You don't need calculus to build the pyramids or Gothic architecture. You don't need calculus. Next question. Thank you. Now, I, hope that, I hope that helps. What he's really trying to say is you wasted a lot of time in college. Yes, Auntie Bobo. Michael, hot flashes. 
Excellent. That's a good question. Everybody wants to know about these things. Michael, in case you didn't hear it, the question was, hot flashes. Go. Since you're engaging me as your personal gynecologist doctor right now, I want to ask you, do you suffer hot flashes? Yes, I just really? started this week. Really? Okay. Yes. What you need to go do is go down to the Chinese college down the road. And they've got something made from ox testicles. Okay, you drink this in the morning, okay, and then you go in for acupuncture. Then they give you camel testicles. Then they give you something resembling a dildo, except it's not a dildo because it has a Chinese name. And that should take care of your hot flashes. But listen, don't take my word for it. You go down there and let the Chinese look at you. And don't take care of it. I'm going to rip my uterus out with my hand. No, I've done that. Don't rip your uterus out, okay? Yeah. Don't, and if you do, if you do, make sure to bring alcohol and vinegar. And a skillet. Yeah. And a skillet. That'll tighten it up. Because we bleed it. That'll tighten it up. Tommy's got one. No, but I mean, I've been down there and I've done the, uh, I've done the testicle tea dildo drink. That's right. That's and right. Uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was yeah, well, that's the orthodox treatment. well worth the that's money. That's the orthodox treatment. Yeah. Thank you. Tommy? Yeah. Well, let's take a couple more questions. I'm getting a kick out of this. Mello, Henry, Daryl, anybody? Mello, you, got, you don't have a question Mello, you don't for have anything for me, babe? You fix it. Okay. Don't just hit me with whatever you got. No, I didn't come here for you to John's be good. John's got something. That's John's right. got something. Right. John alert. John, uh, what you got? All right. Yes. John, babe. Yes, John. Everybody, fuck boy John is here. All right. What's your favorite color? Oh, God damn, John. That's not the way to do uh, it. Yeah, it's the kind of yellow that people turn when they die. Me too, me too. It's death yellow. Yes, thank it's you. It's death jaundice. I like jaundice. I have a question. Yeah. Please try to keep the what, questions what, what's that? formatted correctly. Okay. That was not right at all. That's right. Thank you. What's your, favorite, what's your favorite color? Hey, Michael, the end of war. Great. Ooh. Okay. Has it ever occurred to you that war has a role in the world? That we need war? That war, it, 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 it thins out the population? It makes people sacrifice themselves for, their, for, for something higher, something larger for them? It may even be a bad cause, you know? Maybe me like the guy with the bad mustache? But I think war is part of the equation. Don't shy away from war. War is needed sometimes. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Well, you don't have to enjoy it, Tom. I mean, you can, you can, certain people can and do, but, I mean, it is part of the rhythm of life, the cosmic rhythm of life. So deal with it, in other words. Exactly, yeah. 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 Well, that helped. That's very helpful. All right, everybody, just deal with it. Yeah. Okay, deal with it. Right, can well, we end on something less grim? Yeah, let's take, let's take, thanks, okay. thanks for bringing us down, Tom. I had a comedian hey, and everything. So depressing. No, he's, okay. You, you know. All right, now hold on here, Jason. Jason. Michael. Yeah. Yeah, you can yell it, and I'll pick it up from the microphone. This Bronies. Is, say it again. Bronies. Bronies. Great Bro question. <laughs> what, what the hell is that? A brony, Michael. You know what a brony is? It sounds like an Irish dance. Bronies. Oh, hold on, bronies. That's uh, uh, cisgender men who are into. The pony thing, My Little Pony. Well, I mean, if people find community somewhere, who am I to say they can't? Hallelujah! Michael Garvin, everybody! I think, the, I think the message that we've gotten today, and this is the uplifting part, is if you're going to go to war, be a brony, do it on a pony. Right? Is that what you got from that? Michael Garvin, everybody, give him a round of applause. That's great. Oh, I just, I just adore you, Michael. That's terrific stuff. You gotta love him. All right, now we're gonna go to the list and see who we've missed. Yeah, you saw me, you saw me reach for my glasses on my head when they were here, and that's because that drink I drank is a great yeah, drink. Yeah, good job, Bernie. It's a good drink. <laughs> Oh, wow, it did everybody. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage. If you're missing a lighter, 
at home, out in the field, you turn, you're like, what motherfucker ripped off my lighters? Probably somebody I knew. Here's how you solve that problem and so much more. The one, the only, Auntie Bobo, a minister at the Tabernacle of Hedonism, ladies and gentlemen, a deacon, an official deacon as of two weeks ago at the Tabernacle of Hedonism. Give Auntie Bobo a round of applause. If, if this were a porn, this is our money shot right here. So don't go anywhere. That's right. It's the money shot of the money shot. Yeah. Look at that. Let me know if you need any bubbles. Hi, Ella. I am Auntie Bobo, the natural life queen, and I became a natural life queen because of my husband. He's a Vietnam veteran, and he, uh, his name is Wild Bill, and we've been separated for like 13 years, but now we've lived together for two because of finances, and he was stealing all my lighters, so he would come in the house, he's like six foot, and Got one arm all tattooed and go, there's a hundred lighters in this house and I can't find one. And like, I bought four NASCAR lighters and they disappeared the next day. And you don't want to fight NASCAR. I, it, so I started attaching shit to them. The first thing I attached was a, was a chopstick. He ripped that off and threw it in the fireplace. But uh, I started attaching all kinds of shit. This. The very first day I started slinging nacho letters, I sold a butcher knife like this for $35 to a man who lived in his van down by the river. And what these are are unstealable letters. There's nachos. It's mine or whoever I sold it to. You're also welcome to make your own nacho letters. But you know, I don't often tell Bill stories just straight out. And I found a bag of his in his room. And um, I just had to bring it here. <laughs> Have any of y'all ever heard of UMF of America? No. This is a kind of trollish looking man with his finger right up his nose and then shit dripping out of it. Yes! All right. Yes! Very good! Very good! So, at my house, they decided to start the ugly motherfuckers um, in my A-frame. That was their, what do you call it, clubhouse? Yeah, and this is, this is one of their shirts. <laughs> so, it's just the ugliest came to Alaska. Now, I didn't know I ever lived in a small town where, like, you couldn't get out, so, like, everybody knew everybody. Haines is 2,000 people. You either have to get in a boat or drive, like, <laughs> like 300 miles to go somewhere. And, uh, and so everybody knows everybody. And they're the ugly. This is the back of the shirt. My dad became a member. They're real cute. They would all get together and stand there and chant, Oh, please! Oh! It says ugly as in, and then it's got this you of America too. You know, so I don't know if that went through the second one, second charter. I don't know. I don't know. But this is the troll on the back again. Isn't that nice? Yeah. And so they decided they wanted to be like a service organization and do like scholarships and shit for the kids because there's just not a lot of opportunity. So. <laughs> They couldn't go around being called the ugly motherfuckers. So they tried unusually masculine fellows. Were there, <laughs> now, any, were there any women among them? No, women were not only forbidden, but women are not allowed to wear the t-shirts, even in private. Was it like a 
like a women's auxiliary for the ugly. Yes, but it's not with the uglies at all. Marilyn, at the time, was the only African American woman in town, and the bookkeeper, my friend, she started the club with Becky, and uh, we were a service club too. One of the functions I did was a car wash with them, and I can't remember the name of our club. So but they deprived women of the of the of the joy of being ugly. No, I, no heckling. I wasn't even supposed to go to their oh, parties, right. and they were at my house. Yeah, yeah, we used to fight, so I'm much more reminiscent now, now that it's been a really fucking long time. So I brought home, brought here, my family photo album. My God, this show is good. <laughs>